Hello and welcome, my name is Arctic Toast and today I want to talk about one of my favorite commander decks ever. She's fast, resilient, and venomous, so let's take a look at Hapatra, the Zero of Poisons. Hapatra is a 2-2 legendary creature human cleric that only costs a black and a green, and she reads. Whenever Hapatra, the Zero of Poisons deals combat damage to a player, you may put a minus one minus one counter on target creature and... Whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create a 1 1 green snake creature token with death touch. I am aware that you can build Hapatra in many different ways, ranging from minus one minus one counters to combat, crater hoof, to a token strategy, um, but I opted to go the combo route as I am at heart a combo player. So let's get into it and start with the foundations of any well oiled machine of a deck the ramp and card draw. This deck contains 14 ramp cards and 10 ways to draw cards. So let's kick off the ramp package and let's take a look at the creatures. I run a trio of Arbor Elf, Landwar Elves and Elvish Mystic. They are accompanied by Devoted Druid, Chandra Lishit and Priest of Titania. Running 7 Elves in total allows the Priest to potentially tap for 7 green mana. This can give you a huge boost early on if you get a lot of Elves in play right away. Devoted Druid can tap for mana and then be untapped by putting minus one minus one counters on herself and this obviously synergizes very well with Hapatra's ability and happens to be one of the combo pieces in this deck as well. Lastly, Chandler and shit comes in with three minus one minus one counters so she makes a snake whenever she ETBs and Hapatra is on the field. Moving on to the mana rocks, I run the Almighty Soul Ring, Felwar Stone, Talisman of Resilience and Golgari Signet. Green and black are two colors that are heavily played in my playgroup, so Felwar Stone is more often than not tapping for one of my colors if not both. Rounding out this ramp package, I run Dark Ritual, Wild Growth, Carpet of Flowers and Growing Rites of Itlamok. So Wild Growth is one of those great budget ramp cards that I feel like flies under the radar and doesn't get removed as often as other mana rocks do. I personally think this card should be played more, as currently it is only played in 9% of all decks that can run it, according to ADA trick. Carpet of Flowers is another somewhat of a group adaptation, as blue is often also played in my group, and as such nets me 2-4 mana each turn depending on how far along in the game we are. Growing Rights might not be considered ramp card by some, but I feel in Hapatra you often have 3-5 creatures out by turn 4. So it can often be flipped the turn it comes down, and then you secure the Gaius Cradle on your board, <laughs> if it doesn't get blown up afterwards of course. For card draw, we run 3 instances of one-off draw effects that can really fill our hand quickly when we need it. These are Read the Bones, Sign and Blood, and Knight's Whisper. We also run 2 combat draws as we can often safely attack with one of our death touching snakes. Driven to Despair has been absolutely brutal when swinging several creatures at each opponent and then making them discard while you draw for each creature attacking, only for 4 mana total. It is annoying that you can't do this at instant speed, but with our snakes having death touch, blocking is always very difficult for our opponent. Toski has been a recent addition, but only being printed in Kaldheim, but it has been putting in a lot of work. Once it's on the battlefield, it will most likely stick, as it has indestructible. It won't always draw us cards, but in my experience, it will often draw us 5-10 to 10 cards over the course of the whole game. Lastly, the bulk of our draw is found in a recurrable category. Sylvan Library, Phyrexian Arena and Necropotens are powerhouse staples in Commander and find their home in this deck as well. Being able to draw cards every turn they are on the battlefield is invaluable to keep going and finding our combo pieces. Rounding out our card draw package, we run Skullclamp and Generous Patron. Skullclamp draws us two cards for one mana as long as you have tokens to kill with it, which you don't often run out of in this deck. Lastly, Generous Patron can draw you two cards upon entering as her support mechanic actually allows you to target your opponent's creatures. Now this isn't something you always want to do, but in a pinch it can really help out to draw those two extra cards. What we'll most likely use her for though is her drawing effect every time we put a minus one minus one counter on an opponent's creature. On several combos in this deck, often with redundant and interchangeable pieces. All combos in this deck will need Hapatra or Nest of Scarabs, as they fill the same role and are necessary for them to work. Another group that is interchangeable amongst one another are the Drainers. Zillaport Cutthroat, Blood Artist, Bath, Sniff Remembrance, and Obelisk Spider. Now the first one we will take a look at is the Blowfly Infestation combo. We 
will need Habatra, Blowfly Infestation, any of the Drainers, and a creature on the board that will die to a minus one minus one counter. This can be yours or an opponent's. To start this chain, you put a minus one minus one counter on a one one creature and kill it. This will resolve into several triggers. Firstly, you let Habatra's resolve and create a new one one snake. Then the drain will resolve and then followed by the blowfly infestation trigger, which will ask you to put another minus one minus one counter on a creature. Here you can target your snake that you just created and this will result in an infinite loop that will drain the table and get you to win. The second combo I want to talk about is the Yogmoth Undying combo. The cards you need are Hepatra, Vizier of Poison, Yogmoth, Trend Physician, Young Wolf, any of the drainers, and optionally one other creature. So first, you pay one life and sacrifice Young Wolf or the other creature to Yogmoth Trend Physician. This ability will be on the stack and you will now draw and choose a target for a minus one minus one counter. You may target any creature on the board except Yogmoth himself. Then, Habatra will trigger and you will make another snake. If you sacrifice Young Wolf, there is an undying trigger and it will return to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. Sacrifice a snake to place a minus one minus one counter on Young Wolf, creating another snake and cancelling out the plus one plus one counter he got from the Undying Trigger. You can then repeat this loop for as much life as you can pay. To regain the life lost and damage your opponents to win the game, use any of the drainers we talked about earlier. The last and worst combo is the Voted Quill Spy combo. All pieces used for this combo synergize well in general with the deck, but if you feel the need to change this combo out for something else however, there is no harm done. The cards you'll need are its namesake creatures, Quillspike and Devoted Druid. In themselves, you can make Quillspike an infinitely big creature, but it doesn't have any haste nor any evasion. So personally, I would strongly advise on having Hapatra on the field to make an infinite number of snakes. Or you can also add an Essence Warden with Hapatra to then gain an infinite amount of life. Now, we run 6 tutors, but surprisingly only one of the black tutors. This is done on purpose to use different tutors than your usual demonic and vampiric tutors. Our combo pieces being mostly creatures it allows us to use Eldritch Evolution, Green Sun Zenith and Finale of Devastation to find key creatures we are missing for our combo. Finale of Devastation can also double up as a win con if we ever get to the X equals 10 and swing with our board. The other two tutors require some way to sacrifice. These are Pattern of Rebirth and Protein Hulk. Both of these require us to sacrifice the creatures, but luckily we run several ways to do this. Carrion Feeder, Phyrexian Tower, Eldritch Evolution, Diabolic Intent are all ways we can easily sacrifice our creature and start looking for what we need, sometimes even doubling up on tutors if we're lucky. So once we find our combo, we need to look at ways to protect it. To help with that, we run Heroic Intervention, Veil of Summer, and Autumn's Veil. While Heroic Intervention is the best way to protect against removal of our creatures, both fails help us push through counter spells. If our protection fails and our pieces end up in the graveyard, we run a suite of recursion to keep moving along and put our puzzle back together. Unearth, Reanimate, Animate Death, and Life and Death are all solid reanimation spells that will help us put things together quickly. Eternal Witness, however, gives us a body while recurring something to our hand. And our last piece of reanimation is Phyrexian Reclamation. Yes, it is a lot slower than the rest of our package, but it is also very cheap, and we can put creatures back into our hand on the end step before our turn. Sometimes it happens that we need to make another snake or put another minus one minus one counter on something to kickstart our combos, so we run Amid Eternal, Fume Spitter, and Contagion Clasp as enablers in the deck. Now, we are trying to put together a combo, but that doesn't always mean we get to play Solitaire all game. Opponents are bound to play threats or permanents that will try to slow us down. For this exact reason, we run 8 removal spells, 2 board wipes, 3 creature removals, and 3 enchantments slash artifact removal. Toxic Deluge is one of the better black board wipes, and Black Sun Zenith synergizes well with Hapatra, as it puts minus 1 minus 1 counters on each creature. Snakes created will then stick around after the board wipe. This member is a cheap removal spell that can kill most creatures, and Grim Affliction plays nicely into Hapatra's abilities as well. Ovenwall Tracker works very well with your Death Touch snakes, as you can make them fight your opponent's larger creatures and just kill them outright. We don't run too much creature removal, as a lot of minus one minus one counters are being placed while playing the deck, and this often keeps the board clean. Lastly, we run Crossen Grip, Nature's Claim, and Wicker Bow Elder. The Elder enters the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter on it, so it often creates a snake, 
and it is a great target for putting minus one minus one counters onto it and then blow up artifacts and enchantments. Now, three more cards that round out the deck before we move on to some notable lands. Finn the Fangbear is a recent addition and might not stay in the deck forever. Finn synergizes nicely with our Death Touch Snakes and might win us a game with Poison Counters, but so far he hasn't really been much of use. Lastly, we run Essence Warden and Collector Oof as some value cards that help our game plan along the way, without really belonging to a particular category. So let's go over some notable lands and we can call it a wrap. Ghost Quarter, Pachuca Bog, and Grasping Dunes all fill a utility role in our deck. Ghost Quarter is great for taking out troublesome lands and the bog clears out graveyards of anyone who is trying to pull some shenanigans with the yard. Grasping Dune falls into the enabler category as it can make a snake or kill a troublesome target. Well, that was a deep dive into one of my favorite decks and I hope you enjoyed the video. The deck list will be linked in the description and if you have any questions about the deck, put them in the comments and I will answer them. Take care and have a great day.